Hello everybody, this is Abraham with Not Sure Computer Services. Now what we got here is a MacBook Pro and it's got a broken screen. This location here. Apple makes these things incredibly fragile. So what happened was a, um, a cord got stuck on the inside, the computer was closed and the screen got cracked. Uh, before we begin doing this, we need to shut down the computer. So Shift, Control, Option, Power. Well, I don't know. Well, it doesn't want to work. So they changed it. Well, wow. this is a brand new machine, literally a couple months old, months maybe. Um, okay, then we push and hold the power. And just shut it down. Uh, when computer initializes, it needs to know the presence of the screen. So if we're gonna uh, start working on a computer without a uh, screen unplugged, we're gonna have issues later on. First things first, you remove the screws, then you use a guitar pick or something flat. I use the back of the tweezers. And you just pry the sides. You're going to hear a click on both sides. And once you click, then you have to grab it from the front and pull forward. So if you just lift up, you can damage some locks on the back. So you just lift in the front and pull forward. Uh, these are the locks that you need to disengage and they work by being pulled. All right, now we got some screws to remove. Um, this particular Mac is a silver color. Uh, I do have a replacement LCD. Let's take a look and make sure that the screen I got is the same type <clears throat> you have to be careful opening everything because this stuff is so fragile you don't want to break a screen that you just received okay it looks like it's the right one. Uh, just by looking at this screen, I see we're going to have to transfer this metal piece over here. This little thing uh, looks like that goes and the cable gets plugged in. So that's the cable and this metal thing gets transferred. We are going to have to use my trusty screwdriver for removing uh, hex screws. I'm just going to see which number we're going to need for these little ones. This one is a T4, so we're going to use T4. Okay. Apple likes to use many different kinds of uh, screws to uh, put together the computer so I don't put those away because we might switch them and what I do first is I go over and I just loosen them I don't untighten just loosen and the reason that I do that is sometimes there is either too much um, thread locker there may be too much see that one's different size there may be a cross-threaded screw and in that case I want to know ahead of time before I start taking things apart that I'm gonna have a fight on my hands all right all these things seem to go smooth I don't really need this LCD right now okay this one again 
Oh, this one, by the way, was uh, T5, so T4 and T5 so far. I need to loosen this one, this one. All coming nice. All right, then we're going to have to remove all these little ones. And for that, we're going to use a uh, uh, screwdriver that is used to uh, remove the screws from the iPhone. Then we're going to undo our antennas. It is probably a good idea to disconnect the battery. Oh, that's not battery. The battery is right here. This screw here is the one that is allowing us to just disconnect the battery but we don't have to remove anything and the reason that we want to disconnect the battery is if a screw falls down uh, onto a circuit board it could inadvertently create a major issue by short-circuiting something that we do not want short circuited. I'm just gonna use a post-it note to slide under the battery connector. Let's get this screw. This way, we're not interfering with anything on this computer. There. Okay, I like post-it note, taped, and now the system is disconnected. All right. Now, let me zoom in. We are going to be removing these little guys. And for that, I use the iPhone tool. If you are working for somebody and uh, time that it takes you to undo all these things is of the essence, you probably gonna do this much faster than I'm doing here. And the reason that I don't like to go fast is these screws <clears throat> are made from some kind of cheap recycled metal and if you go too fast you're risking it stripping so this is now freed up let's get to the other side sometimes also what happens is uh, the computer is held closed by magnets and uh, screws could get snatched by some of those magnets as, the, as you move the computer back and forth. Um, I, it doesn't happen as often if I'm not recording, but when I record things usually go <laughs> strange and screws disappear. We don't want them to disappear. 
I like to put the system together exactly as it was before better because it's working right. got almost all of them out <coughs> All right, all these little guys are out. Now we need to pull these, the this one and the on the other side. For that, we're going to be using our T4, I believe. Is no, that's not the one. Oh, yeah, T4. It does help to have a steady hand when you work on uh, little things like this and sometimes I usually have fairly steady hands but if you're tired or stressed the hands may not be as steady as you like them to be. Let's zoom out and I believe we have our antenna freed up so this piece will come off but before that can happen we can we have to loosen all these completely and now that the screws are loose I can just use the blade itself and uh, pull them out I don't know if uh, working on a Swiss watch would be a similar experience. I did work on some watches. Didn't fix it though. Didn't have the parts. And it is so far that I can say it's not the same experience working on watches. Um, and the reason for it is not because it's different. The reason for experience being different is um, computers should not be built like Swiss watches. Too fragile these things are. I like computers that can take a beating. <coughs> All right. This is the video cable. We got all these other ones pulled apart. Let's get this off. Ha! That screw decided to hide on me. This is why I like to disconnect batteries. Screws like to get lost. They're like little children. Uh, we don't watch them, they run away. Oh, 
Oh, come on. Ninety ninety little screws. All right, T five. Get this one out. And this guy. There's one nice little tool that I have. It's a magnum, magnum, magnetizer, demagnetizer. Just put your blade in there. And now the screws are holding onto the blade. And if you don't want that, you just put it in the other slot and it demagnetizes your blade. Okay, we got this loosened. Now we're gonna need to remove the uh, screws that hold down the top and to do that I believe before we can do that we need to pry this off that one is a bit tricky oh, not on this one some of these are glued down this newer model no glue that's good let's see okay I do believe that this screw here needs to be removed. <clears throat> yep. This one is holding the antenna cables down. All right, and we just slide those antennas from under the heat sink and poof, easy peasy. All right, now this portion is going to be a little trickier. So, first we find okay, this one is T9. We are going to just loosen them up your turns so the top section is effectively disconnected from the bottom section and before we can completely remove it we're gonna have to open the computer What I like to do is hang the computer on the edge of a table. <coughs> you can see how I'm doing it. So it's on the edge of the table and opened at 90 degrees. And now I can remove uh, the rest of the screws. You can actually remove uh, two out of three right away and just leave one so you can open the screen. All right. I've received, uh, I was doing a phone screen replacement, received the package and uh, the packaging of the screen was so I can't say it was bad but it was not done right and uh, when I opened it up by just opening the package the screen got damaged I mean these things are so thin that um, it's not even not even funny okay so we got separation we got our screen separate from the body. Okay, let's put that away. Get our new screen. And <clears throat> same thing here. So you gotta peel this stuff and you gotta be really careful. So 
So if I was to rip this out, I could damage the contacts. So I'm not going to rip this out. I'm going to just go really, really slow. Okay. That pulls out that. And we can just... And no pressure anywhere. Okay. And sometimes you got to also watch this plastic protection could go too deep down and as you put it on it um, bites and you can't pull it off easily so keep that in mind all right move this up a little bit closer Okay, what I'm doing is I'm lifting the contact group connectors out of the way so they don't get pinched. And we set the screen in place. Um, the screws that hold down screen are adjustable. So before you actually tighten those screws, you need to make sure that the top is flush, front, back side to side with the bottom and don't cross thread all right so i tightened it then i release it make like a three quarters of a turn and now we want to close this thing. <clears throat> and now that we closed it, we want to adjust the top, bottom, and side to side so that everything is where it's supposed to be. Uh, with all this precision, I don't know why Apple does that. I guess if you're not doing quality job by checking to make sure that uh, it's uh, everything where it's supposed to be, it's noticeable. So I think that would be the only reason because there's really no other reason to have this uh, top and bottom misaligned or they could put screws that are um, uh, cone shaped and as you tighten them they will center themselves well that's not what's happening here so let me turn it you can see here that it's flush you can see the bottom kind of shinier but if if you put my, if I put my finger here it is flush. Uh, we see this is straight and front is straight. We are good to add all the screws back in. All right. <clears throat> These big screws uh, there is probably torque specification on them, but I say make them tight, not too tight, because if you make them too tight, you can strip the um, the windings on uh, the screws. All right, and before we actually start assembling, I want to open it and close it just to make sure nothing's catching. You never know when you receive a part if it was uh, damaged in any way, anywhere. <clears throat> Put our 
screws back in. Uh, this part, uh, it has the little tiny spring inside and this is what uh, retracts and extends the uh, contacts. And these would go first. And again, speed in this job is important, but I would advise not to use it. And the uh, reason for it is it's so easy to screw this up. Just too easy to screw it up. And these parts are not cheap and they're not easy to find. Um, this one I received directly from China. Uh, FedEx shipped two days from China. I am amazed. I was watching the tracking online and I was just just blown away <laughs> how quickly it traversed the world. It did come here over the North Pole because one of the uh, tracking uh, entries was uh, in Anchorage, Alaska. So if it goes through Alaska, it means North Pole. Okay. Next, we are not going to put the antenna back in, but we're going to test to make sure there aren't any issues with the screen. And for that, we're going to connect the video connector. All right, let's do it this way. Okay, that's in. Let's connect our power back. <clears throat> we do need to tighten this a little bit because we don't want any unpredictable operations. And let's see. I know what needs to be done. It needs to be plugged. Uh, before we plug it in, we need to put one of these screws back in and uh, the reason for it oops come on t5 is that uh, some energy is going to be sent through the um, board and we need that energy to go where it's supposed to. Okay, let's plug this in. Yep. 
uh, push and hold power button a little longer than usual. So, good to go. Close it up. At this point, we're just going to need to be extremely careful. Let's put the antenna cables back in. First one, second one, come on. Come out, come out, wherever you are. All right. I think this part could use better design. But, not surprising, nothing on uh, what Apple manufactures is actually designed to be repaired. They do not want anybody to repair their products. Not because it's not repairable, but because Apple is losing money when somebody fixes their products. Okay, just gotta use that little bit of persuasion to get that out. Now, let's remove this screw. We just don't want to run the computer without a proper grounding of the circuits and uh, in one of my videos I explain why that is and the reason for it is that some of the circuits are designed uh, with booby traps inside meaning that they send um, a lot of energy through a circuit that is not uh, going to handle that much energy unless it's grounded or you know the big fetter connection is made um, it can smoke and when you see smoke usually it means something bad has happened not about to happen has happened already you are screwed if you see smoke and if it's yours well you just lost some money if it's somebody else's uh, that could put some stress in your life all right we got that last one gonna put it Right there. Okay, I'm using T4, and I'm supposed to use T5. Where did T5 go? T6, T5. All right, and tight. Now, the reason that you want to tighten them by hand first is to make sure you did not cross thread these screws. Uh, they are easily cross-threaded and always interruptions All right. that was from Firefly 
if there are people fans of the firefly leave a comment like i wish firefly would continue it was a really good show really homey i got all the episodes on my phone and i watch them when i can all right we have achieved the goal let's get this little guy back in place that one is t4 By the way, when I see in movies that they, you know, fly around in a spaceship and there's smoke, um, if you are on a spaceship and there is smoke, <laughs> it's bad. And they, in the movies, manage to fix it somehow. I don't believe it. All right. That's in place. Let's get this guy in place so firefly mr nishka always interruptions okay Tighten this by hand without any tools. Then we use a tool and just snug it down. Okay. That's T5. We need T4. Okay. Make sure that nothing is under stress. That little snap. I don't like that. That's basically my blade just uh, slipped uh, probably need a new blade getting worn out. Let's see what's this T5. Uh, it's not T5 so all right now this side by the way tweezers I like it when they are not magnetized in fact this is stainless steel and stainless steel is best for tweezers um, unless you work with plastic then it doesn't make any difference okay uh, also which one goes in first one is a circle one is an oval the circle goes in first that uh, arranges the distance between the points so you want to put in the circle circular hole first there is a difference between this <clears throat> which one goes in first so you want to put the circle which is on this side and then oval all right snug it down good good now we have our little plastic pieces Let's just put them both in I believe those were T5 let's get the T5 
this one does not have the oval. No, they were T4, not T5. Also, when you work, do work like this, pay attention to the tops of the black screws. The reason that they're black is that it's noticeable that somebody was fixing the computer. So if you take this to Apple for whatever other problems, they will see your screws being touched. Uh, that's why it's extremely important not to let your blade jump. When blade jumps, those screws reveal shiny surfaces underneath. So if you look at the work that I've done, right here, you cannot really see that that was taken apart. Sometimes it's just impossible. Let's see. Let's put these guys back in. And a little bit by a little bit, we are going to complete it. Uh, when you put the screw in, you want to go backwards and hear the click. I'll try and be quiet. And uh, when you hear the click, then you know you're not cross threading. There almost a full turn all right so sometimes the click takes a long time to come by but there will always be a click so what I'm doing is I'm applying some pressure and turning the screw backwards click and right away you go forward that means it's going to be biting properly properly and it's going to go into its place as it's supposed to that was pronounced also if your screwdriver is magnetized you could pick up several screws so it's a good idea to space them apart when they're um, laying loose back yeah. click forward and this side is done When you put in the first one, you want to keep a little pressure on the part so that it uh, is placed where it's supposed to go. Then the question, what if you don't hear a click? There it is. That means you're cross-threaded by so much that uh, you can't even align the threads okay almost there What I find is as you get closer to being done, 
suddenly are faced with slightly more problems. Click. All right, we are done. Let's see. Now putting the cover back on, that's trick. Before we put the cover back on, give it a glance. Um, I don't see anything out of the ordinary. So I put it back on, put it in a little bit of Everything about Apple is difficult. Oh, come on. One side, another side. Quick, quick. All right, now we can put our screws back in. <clears throat> Go back. Ah, click. Go forward. Thankfully. Apple made the case screws uh, shiny so that if you open it up you don't have to be as careful reassembling it. Okay. So if your screwdriver jumps as you put it together, not, not a big deal. So. This is an indication by Apple saying, yeah, you can open the computer. Just don't do anything else. Open it, look at it, and close it. Wait, somebody's gonna do that? Why would you open a computer? Well, actually, I guess I'm wrong. When I was a kid, I always opened everything up. There were no computers in my day. But tape recorders, TVs, stereo, hi-fi, all kinds of stuff. Okay, we are done. Ah, the sweet sound. And it's working. So good enough. I am going to peel the protective coating. I usually put it on the old screen. Now the old screen you don't want to throw away. Uh, the old screen still has value in as far as uh, um, testing machines if they work or not. So sometimes you have something that has a dead screen um, and uh, you just don't know if it's a screen or if it's a circuit. Uh, you could use a broken screen to see, check backlight, check image, check quality of the whatever circuits. So I still use them. If you like my videos, give me a like subscribe if you have questions down below you can push the little bell symbol don't have any pens here but i was thinking of drawing a bell well at any rate thank you for watching enjoy save money always save money